your good news is always a threat to a narcissistic person. Why is that? Always. So, you know, it's funny. It, why is that? Because it, it, remember, at the core of it, narcissism's about insecurity, deep, deep insecurity. We always think of these people as having really big self-esteem. They have what we, I can only call inaccurate self-esteem. They have this sort of falsely grandiose vision of themselves, but at this unprocessed, deep, unconscious level. It's not like they walk around thinking, I'm really insecure, so I better be grandiose. The insecurity is unprocessed. They're not even aware of it. They're not even aware of it, but it's almost like this nagging thing that's always in the background. So anything that activates that sense, like it's almost like it starts to percolate up out of the groundwater, that's when you'll see all kinds of things. Passive aggression, which is what you were up against, um, uh, sullenness, resentment, um, sometimes overt aggression, because they're trying to, to protect themselves against the threat that this, that this insecurity will pop up. That's, that's the dance, right? So when I've worked with folks who are in narcissistic relationships, listen, people who have, who have been married a long time or in long-term relationships or have kids, it's not so easy to say, just break up and follow it's, your bliss. It just doesn't work that way. And so I'd say, okay, I'm gonna to have to give you some strategies to stay in this. And I always call it the good, bad, indifferent rule. Never ever share, never ever let the narcissistic person be the first person you share your good news with. Never. You should have called your bestest person at that point. Who's gonna celebrate you. Who would have been like, oh my gosh, we all got him, right? Like the good thing happens and you're like, I gotta tell this person. And they're like, oh my gosh, 20 bottles of champagne. We're having a party. That's who you tell first. Then you got your other people who are going to be happy for you. And then, and only then, do you tell the narcissistic person. Because at that point, you felt that your good news was held and cherished and celebrated, and you just feel happy. You shared it with people who were able to mirror it back to you, that feeling of goodness. That's what parenting is about, by the way. When your kid says, look, Mommy, I got an A in my exam. Honey, that's so great. Not like, oh, I'm too busy to deal with that right now. And that's what kids who have narcissistic parents get a lot of, like, I don't have time for that right now. And right? The success is never enough. It's never, yes, it's yes. never what enough. What else do I need to do to get the attention? Right. Yeah. But in adulthood, that mirroring matters. And then once you do that, and you roll up to the narcissistic person like, I wish my life was like that. In some ways, you've been so buoyed that it'd be like, you know what? Like, you don't even, you, at some point, you're like, whatever. You know, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I hope it is too. You've I hope that works out for you. You, you, know, you feel seen, good. Yeah. You feel seen. Uh -huh. And that's the good. The bad, same thing. Never go to a narcissistic person first with your bad stuff. What happens, it could be, what happens when you share bad news? They'll news? either feel inconvenienced frustrated what do you want me to do about this um oh my gosh like oh i'm under I, I have so many things are being asked of me they go into their victim thing yeah you figure it out yeah, yeah you figure it out like how and you feel let's say it's like really bad news like i found out my mom is really sick or i um you know it turns out they're going to be downsizing my division and i'm probably going to be in that first round of layoffs or whatever it is you know you find out your friend is ill or you're ill or something more often than not the narcissistic person, it's almost like they don't want to hear that there's like real stuff that happens in the world.